Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking liquefied text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have here is we have to create a new composition, 1920 by 1920 at around about 10 seconds in duration. Just press OK. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new text layer. So I'm just going to write a word. Um, the font that I'm using is Vajala1. I've just uh, decreased the spacing in between the characters and that's about it really. You're free to use any font that you want. So I'm just going to move this uh, text to the top of my composition and then I'm just going to align it to the center. So the first effect that we need for this uh, liquify text effect is the scale wipe. And once we put the scale wipe on, the direction needs to be changed to 180 degrees and the stretch is going to be maybe like six or seven. Then we need to come over here to the center and we're just going to play around with where we want this stretch to start. So I'm probably gonna put it in the middle of that text. Now we want the stretch to keep on going. So to do that, we need to put in another effect which is called CC Composite. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag that to the top. Now you can see the stretch working there. And what it is that we're gonna do is we're just going to increase this stretch to let's say eight, something like that. So once we've got that, the next effect that we need to apply is the wave warp. So again, with the wave warp, we're just gonna change the direction to 180 and I'm just going to change the wave speed to zero. But now the problem is the wave warp affects the entire text. So what we need to do is make sure that you are on that layer with the wave warp selected. And we're just gonna come over here and grab the rectangle tool and we're just going to draw a mask. Now it's not gonna look properly here because what we need to do is we need to come down to the effects wave warp, find the compositing options and then press plus. And then what we need to do is I'm just going to drag it just to the bottom of where I want this wave to actually be. So I'm going to leave it about there, but now you can see that these little waves are off. So what we need to do is we need to come over to the phase setting and we just need to move that until it, you know, sort of in the right place. So now if I zoom out, it doesn't look that bad, but we're going to make it, we're going to fix it up anyways. So once we've got that, now we need to animate things. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to animate the stretch. So I'm just going to come over here, press the stopwatch, and then I'm going to press U on my keyboard to bring up all my keyframes. I'm going to move that keyframe to about one second, and then I'm going to reset that to zero. So now when we preview that, now we have the text all going down. And that looks pretty good. So we can make sure that we easy ease those keyframes. And if you want to come to the graph editor, you also can. So for example, if you want a bit more acceleration on it, you can do that. So now it kind of goes slow and then it kind of speeds up. So you can play around with some of these settings, but you don't want to go too crazy one way. So the next thing that we need to animate is the wave height. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Click on the stopwatch, press U on my keyboard to bring up those keyframes. And I'm just going to move that keyframe to about one second. And then I'm just going to reset it to zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to easy ease those keyframes as well. So now when we go through that, you can see that now we've got that wave height also animating. So now to make it a bit more unique, what we can do is we can add another effect which is called CC Smear. And with this, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the reach to about 1000 and we're gonna bring up the radius to let's say 150. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna zoom out a bit. I'm gonna put the two, let's say over there and I'm gonna put the from on this side over here. Now you can play around with some of these settings. So the further you go away, the less intense that it's going to be. So you don't want it too crazy, but basically what I'm gonna do is I, I just want it to bulge out a bit. So I'm gonna find that sweet spot. So with the animation, I'm gonna start from about there and I'm just going to bring it out until it gets to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click on the stopwatch for the from and then move to the end of the timeline. And I'm just going to move it, let's say to about there. 
And so I'm just gonna pull up those keyframes by pressing U. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to easy ease those keyframes. So now if we preview that, now we've got this, you know, kind of like a bulge that happens as it goes through. Now we won't need all of it because when we put into another composition, you will only see that top bit as well. So don't worry if it gets a bit too chaotic at the bottom. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a camera lens blur. So I'm just going to search for that effect, camera lens blur. And now you can see it's gone a little bit blurry. So we want to kind of blur out the bottom bit down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a blur map. So I'm just going to come over here and create a new solid and I'm going to call it blur map. I'm just going to press OK. So we need to look up the gradient ramp effect. And all I want is a black to white gradient ramp. And I just want to bring down the black to where I think the text will start. So if you take off the eye, you can move it to roughly around there. And then what we need to do is go back to the text layer, go to the blur map inside the camera lens options, change the layer to the blur map and then put effects and masks. And then we can take off the eye over here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring that blur up to let's say, I don't know, 150. And the final thing that we're gonna do here is we're going to invert it. So now you can see that this is, you know, pretty smooth. And then when it gets to here, it's a little bit blurry. Now you can play around with some of these settings and make it as blurry as you want, but I'm gonna leave mine at about 150. So once you're happy with that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to pre-compose that. So I'm just gonna call that text. And now once I've got that, then I need to look for a effect which is called shift channels. So now we're going to create a little RGB kind of split. So the first color I'm going to change to let's say red. I'm just going to label it red just so I can see it. And then I'm going to change the rest to take green from full off, take blue from full off. And then once I've got that, then what I need to do is I need to duplicate that again. And now I need to do the same for green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the red full off and the green, I'm going to change to green and then I'm going to do the same for the blue. So I'm going to duplicate that, control D to duplicate it. I'm just going to change that to blue and then I'm going to change the green to full off and then the blue to blue. Now, once we have all that, we're going to highlight all those layers and I'm just going to change it to lighten. So now we bring it back to white. And so what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna come to the red uh, layer over here and I'm just gonna press right on my keyboard two times. And now you can see it's creating that kind of RGB split effect. Green, I'm gonna move up two times and blue, I'm gonna move left two times. And now we've got that, you know, cool looking kind of effect on the text. So now that we've got the text with our little RGB kind of effect, the next thing that we need to do is we need to look for an effect which is called liquify. So I'm just gonna move to the start of my composition and I'm just gonna click on the stopwatch for distortion mesh. Then I'm gonna come over here and click that icon there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create a small little drip. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move forward in time a little bit and let's say I keep adding to that and I just drag that down a bit and we'll just add a little bit more to it. So now if I press U on my keyboard, you can see all those keyframes. And so now we're gonna copy that and bring it to the green color. So I'm just gonna come over here, copy liquify. I'm gonna move to the start of my animation, press Control V to paste. Now I don't want these keyframes, so I'm gonna make my own but again, it's gonna be the same process. So I'm gonna come over here, distortion mesh, click on that you know, little icon there, and then I'm just going to drag it down. Now you don't wanna make it exactly the same, so you can just you know, play around with some of those settings. So I'm pretty happy with that one, and then I'm gonna do the same for the blue color. So copy it, press U to bring up all my keyframes. I'm gonna delete all of them. I'm gonna hit that stopwatch for distortion mesh. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to draw out some keyframes over here. So the blue color, maybe we'll run it over on this side and we'll just put a bit more as it goes down. 
So now once we have that, then the next thing that we need to do is we need to add another adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, now the plugin that I'm going to use is going to be called Heatwave from Red Giant. Now, if you don't have this, you can use a wave warp effect, but basically what this Heatwave does is that it allows you to have like this uh, kind of pulsating billowed effect. So you can see here in the preview, it just kind of pulsates it. So if you don't have Universe by Red Giant, then you can just skip that or you can apply another wave warp to that. So once we have that, then the next thing that we need to do is we're just going to create another new composition. So this time it's going to be 1920 by 1080 and we're just going to press OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that composition to that 1080 timeline. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it to the center of my document just so it looks like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and create a new solid. And this is going to have my gradient ramp. So we're going to add a little bit of a background to it. I'm just going to put it underneath the text. And for the colors for my gradient ramp, I'm just going to go to color hunt. So cool. So I've got my nice, you know, colors in the background. I've got my text that melts. The next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to come over here and make this a 3D layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it slightly. So you can play around with some of these settings. For example, if I move this to let's say something like that, and if I can move the orientation, you can put it to wherever you like. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it kind of on an angle, maybe like that. And then I'm just going to move it to wherever I want it. So now we've got the effect and it all goes crashing down. And I think that looks pretty good. So the final thing that we can do to this is we can add another adjustment layer and then we can come over to our effects and look for an effect called bad TV. So now that we've applied that effect, you can see that it's got a little bit of the outlines there. So what we need to do is we just need to pre-compose it all and then we just need to scale it up a little bit as well. So if I bring it to that, then you won't see those edges. And then you, you will have to scrub through to see if there's any black spots in the rest of your composition. But if you're fine, then that's about it. Now, other things that you can do, you can change the color of the text. If you really wanted to, you can put another gradient on there um, and then you can you know, make it warp even more if you like, but yeah. So anyways, that's about it for this quick short tutorial on how to create a liquefied text effect using Adobe After Effects. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.